So in this video, we're going to go over A-level revision tips that will help you boost your grade from a C or a D to an A or A star even potentially if you follow all of these rules. So without further ado, let's begin with the first tip. So the first tip that I would give is that learn your exam definitions. What I mean by this is that each exam always has like these questions that say state a definition of this. And what you can do is create another book and start off with um, the spec like 1.1 and start writing all the definitions that have come up in past paper exams. So as I said, have a separate book, go through past paper exams that you've definitioned, that you have definition answers and just copy them into your book. This is most useful for paper one, but it can also help with paper two as well. Some examples of this are like, define the term pipelining. Like the questions, they basically just ask you to jot down the definition. This is easy marks and easy things that you can quickly learn instead of like spending time on a textbook, trying to figure out what definition is well suited. And there's another example. So describe how the accumulator is used and describe how the program counter is used. All of these are basically um, definitions that you can copy down into your book. So for I, we have, it holds input, output, hold results, and all of that. So instead of just going to a textbook and finding the answers, you can just go to past paper exams and look at the mark scheme and copy these exam definitions down. This is one of the best exam tips anyone can give. So here are some stats for paper one, as you can see, 2020, um, 80 out of 140 were just by knowing all your definitions. 2021, it was around 60. And again, in 2022, there were around 80. So these include like differences, similarities between two things. So with the 12 markers, I've only included the AO1, AO2, which you need to know, like that's your definition marks. And even for paper two, I've just included 2022 for reference, but 45 out of 140, you can just get by knowing your definitions. So yeah, learn your definitions using the past paper exams. This is a very important um, tip that I would give to you. And especially with OCR, they love to recycle past exam questions. We've seen this so many times. So for example, this pipelining question, came in 2022 and it was also used in 2021 and also used in 2018, I, I believe. Um, so yeah, it'll just learning these definitions can just boost your mark by so much. So make sure you go, go through your past papers and learn and write down in a separate book all the exam definitions that have come up. Starting from 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, then 2.1, 2.3 all the sections that you have, just go through past papers on physics and math tutor and even the hardcore papers like 2022, 2021, sample paper, everything. Just look at it. Whenever you see like explain state, just write it down in your separate book. This is the biggest tip that I would give you guys. Time for part two, which is to do well, we must follow the GCSE Computer Science Tutor on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I'm joking. You, you don't really have to follow me but I, I will appreciate if you do um so since we've learned the definitions now we have to now remember them so the best way to remember something is to blurt it out on a piece of paper or if you're not that type of person you can use like quizlet and flashcards but personally i was using blurting as a key um, way of remembering all the definitions so before each revision session, just get a piece of paper and write down everything that you know about the topic. So for example, 1.1 CPU. So what I would do is basically just go through all the um, registers. This is my this is my notes. And basically, this is how I used to um, blurt things out. So start with ALU. All of these are exam definitions, by the way. So from the book, I learn it. And then the next time, maybe in two days time, when I try and um, revisit some things I would um, write down everything that I know about the CPU including all the registers all the buses whatever the key terminology means and this basically um, I would repeat for each revision session that I do and I believe that this is the most important um, part of retaining that knowledge first part is to get the knowledge once you get it you need to remember it 
the only way you're going to remember it is that if you write down um if you keep writing it down um without having the solutions on you so yeah hopefully this makes sense and and if you're a quizlet type of person um just maybe go through some flashcards and quickly test your memory uh, before actually revising and yeah studies have shown that blurting is very effective and when you write something down physically you remember it better hence why this revision technique is very powerful and number three is to learn your oop object oriented programming techniques data structures and algorithms so this is the final part of um your assessment which is uh, paper two which will test your knowledge on data structures and algorithms so it's very important for you to know these and the best resource that i can give to you is this book now a lot of people might not like this book because this the teachers give it and whatnot but it, it's very underrated in my opinion i used to think the same as well like this book is just useless like there's nothing important but no, there's actually important parts, like for example, inheritance, it clearly tells you what inheritance is and how to initialize. The amount of times that I've seen an initializing question on paper two is just crazy. Like book one equals new stock. This is how you initialize. And usually often this is like three mark question on, on paper two, just this one line. So if you know these things, you can quickly get marks quick. And even the data structures, like it literally tells you how queues work, how stacks, how hash maps work. And it even tells you the, the pseudocode for it. The amount of questions that have pseudocode in paper two, um, the book literally tells you. So if you remember these, just know how it works is enough to get the marks. Because if you know that for empty, you have to check size equals zero, then return true, otherwise return false. You can like, you can recreate it in the exam. Um, also, try and do these questions as well. Like, I know past paper exams um, um, are important, but even these practice questions, like maybe just do it before, like doing an exam question. This will really benefit you, trust me, guys. And the, the answers your teachers may have, because the teachers like to keep it secret, because they use, sometimes they use these questions for your mocks. but. If you ask them, maybe they'll give you the PDF for the answers. If not, I'll try my best to to like incorporate them when I make the A-level videos for the data structures and algorithms. So make sure you, you, you do these practice questions. This is very important and it will really help you to answer the questions. And even with these diagrams, these diagrams will really help you understand the, the traversal and how graphs are being traversed. So yeah, check this book out. It's not sponsored, but I just want you guys to do well in your A-levels. And even with the sorting, as you can see, this diagram is so clean and and even the, the pseudocode for it. If you go step by step, you actually understand how the code works. Even has comments and, and it's just, if you use this book, um, there are some parts which are just useless in my opinion. But if you go through the book, you actually learn so much that your teachers haven't even taught you. So I really recommend this book um, if you want to, of course, do well in your A-levels. And I'll try and make videos or, or small videos on TikTok about um, small topics that students often find difficult. So be sure to follow um, me on every um, platform, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube now and uh, drop a follow and share with as many people as possible we want to try and help everyone that does computer science everyone that has a bad teacher at school so yeah just share with everyone we want to try and help everyone so yeah more videos to come and hopefully you've learned something from this video and and i'll see you next time